What's up, Stokers of Stoke Nation? This is Chad Kroger coming in with the Going Deep in Chad and JT podcast. We're coming in with Hot with episode 54. Yes. Whoa. That's a lot. I th- that's like one year. Yeah. It's our one year anniversary, right? I think that's one year in two weeks. I think 52 weeks is one year. Yeah. Fuck. Happy anniversary, though. Thank oh, you. thanks. Yeah, dude. Freaking that's... Anniversaries are big, dude. As a dude with the GF, dude, it's important to celebrate your anniversaries and just really look back, reflect, and see the growth, you know? And you yeah. guys have come a long way, dude, from already being legends to straight up dank legends now. Oh, thank you. No. Did yeah. you appreciate anniversaries before having a GF? No, dude, not really. Like, I mean, you know, I'd look back and be like, with the boys, like, you guys be like, oh, dude, I remember that one time, like, this is the first time we shotgunned a beer on the balcony, or like, you know, like, oh, dude, this was like one, remember, like, the first time we gargoyled a keg together or something, but like, wasn't like, you know, I didn't even think of it as an anniversary. I was like, that was just a chill moment. It would be nice to commemorate those experiences with some kind of like yearly celebration, though. Oh, for sure, dude. Like, yeah, like, dude, I mean, I don't like see that any... time we mooned the Pirates of the Caribbean line at the Kikorian. Oh, That'd be great. We could celebrate yeah. that each year. Go back, get a Wahoo's like Maui Bowl mm-hmm. or a freaking, you know, some dank enchiladas right there mm-hmm. and uh, commemorate that with a nice meal and then maybe moon passerbyers of like, Paddington three. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And we could like take pictures of our butts each time and see how they've grown. Not from no, no, from not from, from getting fatter, but from getting more robust. Correct. From recruiting muscle fiber from freaking doing squats, isolated freaking dumbbell pulls, and just straight up RDLs. That's Roman deadlift. Dude. It's all about the <laughs> hammies, baby. You can always gauge the amount of tea someone has by I think their ass. Correct. Oh, dude, it's the motor. It's the motor. Speaking of um, getting jacked, you bros have been getting jacked recently, dude. Oh, dude. Uh, Thank you for placing that right there. Dude. Yeah, looking good there. Got dude. oh, thanks. Yeah. N- nipples out. But I think he's. I think he's. <laughs> dude, yeah. This is, yeah. Not, hey, I'm, I'm, show him off. I mean, I'm gonna keep podcast it up. just stepped up to PG thirteen. Yeah. Dude. I came straight from the gym. I'm like, I'm bringing the pump right into the sesh. I'm not gonna shower this musk off. And there's a visual component to the pod now, and I think Chad's nipples are a hot sell. Yeah. Oh, big time, dude. Big time, dude. So you can see, oh, dude. Dude, you want to be... You Thank wanna, you, Aaron, for that camera shift. In 2019, yeah. dude, you're stepping up. Never mind pod listenership, dude. Pod viewership, dude. That's what's right. up. Big move. Yeah. Big move. All-encompassing. Dude, you mentioned Pirates of the... It, franchise movie crowds are the best ones to moon. Absolutely. The gotta best. get a Comic-Con moon those dudes. And, dude, you gotta find, like, some niche um, cosplay moments. Like, we dressed up for Inception. Which was very dank. That's that was an interesting fun. one yeah. to dress up for. People thought that we were working for the theater. Some lady uh, asked me to help her find her seat. I did, dude. I did. Yeah. <laughs> it was chill. Dude, I think it's also fun to moon the line and then get in line with everybody for the <laughs> yeah, movie. Yeah. Like get behind <laughs> yeah. the person. You just and <laughs> not run away from what you've done, but be yeah. like, hey, I'm actually just going to kick it. And yeah. if you want to talk about it, I'm available. But dude, were you mentioning the pump? Because we lifted with a... Uh, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, who, for yeah. those of you who don't know, he was a bodybuilder, action movie star, and then governor of California. Quite a resume. If you took any one of those things, you'd be like, life well done. And he oh. managed to compound all of that into one human life. It's crazy. Insane, dude. Insane. Dude, he, we, were, uh, we were doing deadlifts with him, oh. and he gave me uh, an inspiring speech. And you know that signature look he has? Where he just sort of looks at you, he's like, "I got this. I know who I am." Like in his being, he was like, "He's like, you gonna lift this son of a bitch, okay?" <laughs> and he looked, and dude, he looked at me and he gave me that look, and I was like, "I could lift like 500 pounds right now, mm-hmm. dude." It was, uh, it was life changing. Yeah, I was he, like, he, he stressed you have to have a vision and you have to give other people your vision. Like he's telling us how to protect house parties, and he's like, "You have to tell them that if they come to your party, they have never been to a better party. They will never have more fun than they have at your party." Your party can change the world. Yeah. And I was like, as long as you're there, man. Yeah. I'll do yes. that. yeah. Nice. I was, I've oh. never thought about it yeah. that way, but that's amazing. And dude, then we toured his office, which is right by Gold's Gym. He has his office oh, nice. right next to, uh, close to the gym. Love that's where that. he built his place of work, right next to the gym, so he could get it all in. Amazing. Dude, his office was insane. Like, it's like a museum oh. for like a kid. He's got Andy Warhol's pictures with every president. He has a busk of Lenin, the Russian leader. That was an actual statue from Russia that he had his bodybuilding friends tear down and bring to America when the Berlin Wall f- Wall fell. Wow. Yeah. 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 And I guess he's got other ones in storage that he just might bring out like seasonally. Apparently, they just keep, he he just told them he likes statues, so they just keep sending them to him. And he's like, I'm not a communist, but 
Thank you. Wow. And he's got leaders from every walk of life too, Dude, Republican, yeah. Democrat. Like yeah. he's just about like, I think uh, significance. Yes. Yeah. My yes. my favorite thing is uh, he had a photo of him sledding with George H. W. Bush. Dude, if you have a photo of you sledding with a president, sledding. Gold. Sledding, I gotta imagine. Yeah, not Dude. like one of the Kmart like plastic ones either. Like an old school proper wood one with like the kind of like <laughs> yeah. wave at the front of it. Yeah, you know, the reverse wave. Yeah, Appar Dude. Apparently, they slammed into a barber bush and like broke her arm, her shoulder, or something. What? And he said, when you get lunch with the bushes, they always get bloody marys. Like if you try yeah. to get an iced tea, they're like, nah, we're drinking. Yeah. Love wow. it, dude. Love Break out it, the dude. kettle one, it's 9 a.m. So just because you're, you know, the commander in chief of a country at war doesn't mean you can't cut loose at lunch and just have a little bit of a buzz. I'm all about that, dude. I'm all about that. Getting stuff done while having fun. Yeah. Dude, it, one la last thing. At his, yeah. he had his desk, his huge desk, stuff from like every movie he's been in just like memorabilia out the wazoo and then behind him there's a drawer and he, you open the drawer you expect to see you know papers in there folders paper clips whatever someone has in their office his drawer just had army knives in it <laughs> it was what? packed with it just had huge knives That's had like great. 60 knives in it <laughs> dude we got to hold the uh, shotgun from t2 whoa yeah. That's freaking the, sick. Dude, the thing he's doing the action with on the bike? The, the pump. Oh, yeah. Oh. And he's, Arnold's all about repetition. They said he practiced with it all day. He'd just be walking around, swinging that thing so he'd get that arm action down that looks so badass in the movie. He had bloody Damn. knuckles from it. Dude, freaking Judgment Day, like, is one of the best action movies ever. I mean, Absolutely. I Heart, like, Judgment Day. What was that, 97? 92, I think. 92. 92 was Judgment yeah. Day. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So dang. Yeah, like yeah. I remember that. So dang. And then he's in Predator. I mean, he's in a lot of the best, a lot of the contenders for best action. I mean, dude, even Eraser. Oh, I love Eraser. Which is kind of, you know, like because he has such a strong list of movies he's been in, that one kind of doesn't get talked about as much. Yeah. But, dude, it's fire. It's great. Yeah. With that aluminum gun or whatever that friggin' fires through, like, x-ray vision. And, dude, then yeah. we, uh, we, we got to go to the Arnold Classic on Saturday at, like, the weightlifting competition that he puts on with strong men. Sick. And it was, like, you know, a lot of cool stuff to see there but we uh we tried to talk to joe monta what's his name Mangiano. the super hot guy from uh magic mike and magic mike 2 joe nice. montoya and from uh, oh, true yeah. blood and maybe it was because he was trying to have lunch and he was trying to chill with his uh very beautiful elegant wife uh sofia vergara but oh, nice. um he did not respond well to really? chat <laughs> he's too cool for school he tried to call, we were like, dude, say, oh, you, will dude. you say you support the coral? I don't think he knew we were filming him at the time. We're like, will you say you support the coral? And he goes, just all of the coral? Like trying to be a smart ass. And we're like, yeah, why would we be trying to support just like certain yeah, coral? Dude. Even coral dude. and fish tanks, why not? Yeah. At orthodontist's office, we support that coral still. Because guess what? It's alive, dude. Good, so, it's a yeah. polyp. So oh, Sophia oh, was with support him? people? What, all people? Yeah, dude. Yeah. Dude, they're all I, alive. Dude, when he was talking, I was like, up. I was like, dude, you're not a fucking Joe. You're fucking Lance. <laughs> Dude, good call. He said that. Good call. No, yeah, I said to his face. And he then was like, Sophia. Maurice would be ashamed. Yeah. And it, Sophia was with him? Yeah. yeah. She was wearing a Steelers cap, dude. That got me excited. Ooh. Yeah. She was very kind of like, kind of shy. She was very shy. Really? I mean, she was at like a strongman competition. And so we, maybe it's not her like ideal place to be on her Saturday. And we had For just sure. deadlifted yeah. on the stage. So yeah. we were probably pretty intimidating. Yeah, they brought yeah. us up on the stage in front of like, like 850 people or something and they had us deadlift. That's sick. Yeah. Did it make you like? Did it jack you up? How how many lbs did you think? Because you were on the stage, did you? Increase? We put up. It was fifty five pound plates, which is a weird increment. Yeah. Two of them on each side, so that's two twenty plus the bar. I think the bar was forty five pounds. So yeah. I'm guessing it was two sixty five. Bro, that's no not joke. an right. inconsiderable amount of weight. That's yeah. no joke. Dude. I usually do just a plate. Like, like so, four, buck thirty five. Dude, I'll, you sound so shy saying that. Because well, I'm like, like, what do I do? Yeah, it's yeah weak. if you don't mind that's just getting weak. out of here. That's not weak at all. But by but by two. <laughs> Who's a big plate? You got me flustered, Joe, because you're messing with my weight. Uh, but I put up 265, okay? so Yeah, and it looked like you could have busted out as many reps as you wanted. You can't fail in front of Arnold. No, yeah. dude. And do, are you doing the grip when you do the one hand like that? One hand like one that? One supinated, one pronated? Right. Yeah. No, yeah. I, go, I go pronated. I go double that. pro. Yeah. I don't really? do supinate. What about yeah. you, dude? What are you doing? Dude, I do double pro, too. I agree. Yeah. Joe, you supinate, don't you? Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. Well, I haven't done it in years. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was about to, to say, one. you do eight minute abs, dude. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, how much weight do you put on at eight minute abs? 
body weight. Hey, dude. there's nothing wrong. Sorry, with I, I didn't mean that came up. Yeah, we're not yeah, trying to dude, come down. I'm, get, I'm, I'm getting sorry. over 50 reps in in 45 second intervals, so that's more than one a second. Yes. So I'm flying through that. Thing. And that's respect, dude. And yeah. the core is, I mean, besides the glute, the core has to be the, like the one of the most important muscle groups. It transfers the energy from the lower body to the upper body yeah. to make you a, what we like to call a beast. Dude, have you heard of this new thing? And they call me that. The yeah, psoas. No, what's that? I got something to stretch it. The psoas. It's. I mean, if you're if you're a Rogan head, he's talking about it all the time. It's a muscle that runs from your gut basically down to your pelvis, and it's supposed to be where most back problems come from. Bro, it's the Rick Wilsons. Yes, those sexy abs that people yes. get. You know the V. We we knew a really That's hot guy. Size. No, I don't think so. But I want to talk about those though, because we knew yes. a really hot guy in high school who we didn't even know actually. No, we, we just knew him by his abs. Yeah. We'd see him at the beach and we'd be like, "There's Rick with his Rick Wilsons." And those were just his abs. I don't even think I ever got within 30 yards of him. I'd just like see his abs and I'd be like, Rick's here. He had yeah. the V in high school? Yeah. yeah it was, the guy oh, was dude, His body was so good. Fire. Yeah. Dude. He went to UC Boulder, I think, yeah. and maintained his abs for. Yeah. He was probably drinking tons of. He was probably drinking Bud Heavies and still just shredded. A really cool dude, guy. What an interesting existence to like have a V and also drink Bud Heavies. Dude, you're. Yeah. I mean, the way you were looking in Miami. Oh, thanks, dude. Shredded fire. Yeah. Uh, what about did you guys watch football yesterday? Dude. Yeah. yeah Strider dude. and I are heartbroken because we laid down sweet action. Sweet baby action. I'm dude. 0 for 15 on the sweet action. Dude, you're going to put <laughs> Chad in the poorhouse, dude, because of dude. Yeah. Dude, I, I like to look at it positively as like, dude, I'm teaching you a lesson early about, about gambling. <laughs> you have to lose, dude. If you taste victory too soon, you're going to chase it. And you know what? You got to you gotta be mature. So now you know how to make good decisions going into it, dude. So yeah. I'm sorry, but also you're welcome, dude. No, I'm 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 stoked. Uh, you know, they say your greatest strength comes through loss, I believe, and so I'm getting stronger from losing hey man, those dude. twenty bones. And look, dude. Oh, that's we went it? against. <laughs> yeah. This Gee, one. well, watch out for this guy. Twenty dollars. <laughs> you. <laughs> I mean, who cares? <laughs> no, but you're gonna you're gonna find when you start winning, you're not even gonna care. If you lose so much, once you win, you're gonna be like, oh, whatever. Yeah, that's the that's the problem with gambling. Yeah, yeah. the losing hurts a lot more than the winning. Yeah, I do feels good. I do appreciate that they're honest about their losses though, because I have a lot of friends who gamble and they'll look frustrated all Sunday. Like they're just like, God damn it, fuck shit. Yeah. God damn. And then at the end of the day, you're like, How'd you do this week? And they're like, Oh yeah, I won. Yeah, yeah. I'm like really? Because <laughs> I, the thing. I didn't yeah. see you happy for five exactly. seconds that's, in a row. So I'm it's guessing not you worth didn't. the stress. <laughs> yeah, you're pretty much paying for stress. Dude. Yeah, I I I think we're. I look at it as we're paying for camaraderie because those That's phone true. calls and when we put together the bets, it's just like I hit up Strider and Strider's like baby, 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 and I'm just like I love this jargon. It the is jargon nice. is nice. Dude. Yeah, I I used to get, I, I, and I'm speaking from a place of degeneracy. Yeah, if that's a word. Yeah, um, of course. Yeah, I used to. I, you become emotionally invested in Boise State, you know, <laughs> and when you're doing that. Dude, it's time a to bridge it too far. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're just like that's the team with the blue field. Am I yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I can't. You can't be blue field. You're not getting my money, baby. So I, 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 I would gamble well, on that. Joe thing. went to Iowa for a bit. They have pink locker rooms there. Really? For the away team? Yeah, the away. Team. Oh, oh, yeah, oh the mental games. games. Yeah, interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. Also, breast cancer. Little did they know that would make me and Chad bubbly, and we'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah they want to make sure. Like, this yeah, they want to make sure the visiting team's aware of breast cancer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, dude. If you want to, if you want to. Intimidate the team, like paint the locker room black. So yeah, this is dark. You they're all depressed anything. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. maybe they're still wearing stubs and toe. Pump the Smiths. Yeah. they're just in there. They're like oh, <laughs> Morsi, dude. Yeah, they're like have, have Manchester <laughs> by the Sea playing. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, can we turn screen. this off? Yeah, yeah. Like, nah, dude. Yeah. yeah, whole team just walks through the banner <laughs> when they come out. <laughs> they don't even rip it. They just walk around it. Heads are down. Everyone gets bunnies from Donnie Darko to wear. Just what's going on? <laughs> yeah. And then they play one of those like uh, Sarah McLaughlin like pet adoption commercials. Oh yeah. man, yeah. really put them in their domes, dude. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Assault them with sadness. I can, um, well, I can't uh, stop looking at your spider leg that you got up there on your uh, eyebrow. Oh, I yeah, get dude, that this, too. It's got so long. Yeah, I gotta cut it. I guess it's kind of interesting though. Yeah, I'm kind of like maybe it's good luck. Yeah, I'd leave I, it. I do like it. Thank yeah, because it's unique. So, Joe, do you dislike it? Yeah, I, I, I want to rip it out. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I get those too, and I, 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 when I get my hair cut, she 
goes over my eyebrows now every time. I like I, yeah. I don't tweeze. I'm not gonna do that. No. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, but yeah, I just take care of just it. Cut them. What's, how does that happen? Is that like a high T count or something like that, dude? Like, gotta be. All of a sudden gotta at be. night, your body it's, just got uh, jacked. Well, you know what I've been doing? I've been eating sauerkraut straight, which is a straight up probiotic. Nice. And um, so maybe that's it. Oh, nice. Nice. I like sauerkraut on my dog, you know, the game. Hot dog. I thought yeah. you meant on your friend at first. Oh, dude. Yeah. I mean, look, dude, if we're doing, having fun doing drinking games or like playing some competition or something, I'll do that. Dude. There's no problem, dude. Dude, I gotta say, um, sorry to change the subject back to uh -huh. football again, but. Uh, you know, even though I beef with Tom Brady right now, well, okay, so he's a beast. Yeah. Um, but you know, he is my beef of the week. Yeah, good. Yeah, um, good. I'd never heard him talk before, and then I saw a video. Really? Yeah, and I, I was like, oh, he looks so cool. And then I saw a video of him talking. And I'm like, don't talk. Yeah, he's high pitched. Like, come on, guys, we're gonna win this game. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, dude, the one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time is a fucking dweeb. Talking in an interview Mahomes or sounds like, like that feet. too. Mahomes, does does, yeah. Well, he's got like a he's got like a like that dude from the Waterboy voice. He's like yeah. Bobby Boucher, like kind of talks like that. <laughs> but it's a little yeah. higher. <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah, yeah. And dude, uh, the best jujitsu guy in the world right now, or I don't yeah. know if he's the best, but I hear about him a lot. This guy Gordon Ryan, he's like, hey everybody, so right here I'm gonna be showing yeah. you how to pass the guard. You're like, dude, why don't you have like a deep baritone? Yeah. Dude, what about Tyson? All these, these like in like yeah, beast yeah. mode dudes have these voices that aren't. I, I like the Tyson. Thing. Tyson's kind of works for me though. It's scary. Yeah. St very terrifying. Yeah. 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 And the way he can talk with such clarity about the psychotic things he's yeah. done, like he's like, I would help old women's back to their <laughs> home, back to their houses, and I'd bring their groceries, and then when we got inside their foyer, I'd punch their mouth out, and you were like, oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Just say it soft. Yeah. Yeah, dude. dude. So gathered. Strider, how's the valet? All oh, dude, it's dank, dude. Freaking yeah. dude, it's dank to be outside. You know what I mean? Like just cruising around, dude. You have a nice hue. Thank you, dude. Yeah, I'm getting a nice bronze on on my arms, and neck, you, and face. Did you do the light jog? Of course, dude. Yeah. Of course, bro. I mean, and dude, what's on a hill? You gotta take care of your knees and your joints, dude. Okay, you know? yeah. Not going too hard. You know, working on my force reduction in the gym, dude. Just really like taking care of the joints. And uh, beautiful dude, terminology. Thank you. I freaking appreciate that, dude. Just, just trying to be. Are like, some guys like wind sprinting to the cars? Just, some you'll, of the you'll younger valets, yeah. yeah, dude. Like you know, eighteen-year-old valets. It's good dude. to see that hunger. Of course, dude. They're they're out there. They're fired up, dude. Looking to score some fat tips and park some whips, yeah. and that's what it comes down to, dude. And what's dank about it is you're outside. You're having a good time, dude, with your dank crew of dudes. And um, yeah, I mean, there's of course there's some schmoles in the valet group. Every group's got it schmoled, dude. That's what happens. And you know, dude, uh, but it's it's chill, dude. It's chill. That eighteen-year-old nice. thing reminds me of the parable of the crude parable of like the dad and son with the sheep. Have you heard that one? No, no. I'm... It might not be a human one, but it's like they're looking down at all these sheep, and the young kid's like, "Dad, let's run down there and fuck one of those sheep." And then the oh, dad yeah. goes, "No, let's walk down there and fuck all of them." Oh, nice. you know, and it's about like putting your energy into the places where it belongs. Nice. Dude, I, I don't know if it's I don't a get it. Yeah, fuck, fucking the sheep. I don't. Yeah, I might have messed up what the animals were and what the optics were, but the the I'm, thrust of it I, is like take your time, and then when you get to what actually matters, that's where you put all your energy. Yeah, that still comes through in that analogy. Thank Despite you. Despite if it's sheep or whatever it is, or raptors sheep. or raptors. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. I, yeah, I think the important takeaway is like father son bonding. You know, like true. They're doing honest right conversation. Together. If my dad yeah. said, "Hey, we're gonna like bond. We're gonna go fuck a bunch of sheep," I'd be like. I'm in. Yeah. Dude, I was honest to God, like I used to be so rebellious towards my dad, but especially as I've gotten older and now, you know, in light of his illness, if he asked me to go bone a bunch of sheep with him, yeah. I'm like, yeah, whatever you need, dog. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. It beats like, you know, going out on the golf course playing eighteen holes, freaking oh, caring about how I've, how I've gotta get my finances in order, dude. dude. Yeah, let's go bone <laughs> some sheep, call. dad. Fuck yeah, dude. Screw hole eleven. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, let's that, get do that dog leg kills me. Very interesting. You can't get carnal on the golf course. No. 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 But I've seen Car fellas. We whizzed one time, all four of us. True. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. We once bought golf with our buddy Ferraro, dude, in Cabo. So dank, dude. Just freaking straight up cracking Ronas, dude. Just stepping on some tequila, having a nice <laughs> round. And our buddy Ferraro, who, who is jacked and played baseball, he, he literally thought he could drive the ball 500 yards. And we're <laughs> like, dude, your Tiger Woods can't hit the ball that far, dude. And like, he'd hit the ball, like, shank it so far, like, into like the beach. And he'd be like, oh, dude, I found my ball. <laughs> he'd be like, up by the green. We're like, dude, you didn't fucking hit that. He's like, dude, I'm so strong. He's like such a big, strong guy. Yeah, We're like, yeah. And he just must think because he's a baseball player that there's never, never been anyone as strong as him to play golf. Yeah. And we're like, no, dude, like we're actively watching you suck. 
that's not your ball by the green. He'd be like, no, it's up here, dudes. I found it. Yeah. yeah. Oh I think, and then God. at the end of every oh, hole, dude, we'd see him awesome. count his shots. Oh, dude, yeah. He'd like do it like really physically, like over the top. So he'd be yeah. Like, One, two, 15, 45. We're like, yeah, we're going to give you a 10, dude. We'll move yeah. on. Yeah. No, about you it. just turned to me in the golf cart and you went, He's like, I got a five. And then you just turn to me and you're like, give him a nine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I hate the golf cheating. Can't stand it. Because you're cheating yourself, dude. You're like, who else are you? Well, and then when I golf, I, I secretly count everybody's strokes that I'm with because I know yeah. people cheat. I've, yeah, I've been with you, but you're on top of it. But you know what? I like that because you bring a level of integrity to the competition that's needed. I think yes. we'd be a dank force to play some golf right here. Dude. Yeah, I Fuck like golf. Yeah, I dude. play. It's frustrating. You know, every, everybody sucks at golf, so you just got to accept that you suck. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's good to drink a few beers. Yeah. It's that helps. It's frustrating until you put Michelob Ultra into the mix. Yeah. yeah. True, dude. True. You know, but... And when the food... Every th time you see that cart girl coming around. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. yeah fire. In Orange County, they're always so beautiful, too. Oh, yeah. You're like, oh, my God, this person's like a model for, like, Hurley or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Dude, and then uh, I have a funny story of, like... Uh, brotherly anger. It was me and my buddy Josh playing against his little brother and my little brother. And his little brother was on a par four from the fairway and knocked it in on two, hit an Whoa. albatross. We're in the woods trying to cheat. Like we were literally cheating. We're like, just put your ball there because we we're going to lose to the younger dudes. And then he hears his brother go, oh, 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 I hit it. I made it. I, I got an albatross. I hit it too. And then Josh just goes, fuck you. Runs out and punches his brother for having a good shot. <laughs> it was a two on a four. Yeah, it was a two on a four. Oh, and no. he just ran up. Oh and then, God. and then even worse. I'm sorry, Josh, to keep saying back you, but no, isn't that, that's an eagle. Yeah, it was an eagle, but I think I think it's the fun name for it is an albatross. No, I think that's if you get three under par. You're that's right. A, oh, that's, that's a two, like on, two a five. on a five. That's a two on a five. Damn it, my it's bad. An albatross. Guys. Yeah, but Jason really wanted my Jim Nance over here. Uh, but, yeah, <laughs> it's a needed <laughs> clarification. <clears throat> yeah, I just go ahead. Jason wanted to hold on to the ball so he wasn't going to play with it for the rest of the round. Josh ran out of balls, and he's like, "Jason, let me borrow your ball." He's like, "No, this is my eagle ball." And then Josh goes, "Give me the fucking ball." Promptly takes his swing and hits it into the water. Loses the ball forever. Jesus. <laughs> the wind but I was like, this is my eagle ball. Yeah. And then he just fucking. But dude, if that's your younger shanty. brother, you're like, just shut up. You're just like, my eagle ball, dude. And you're the older brother, you're like, shut up. Dude. Yeah, exactly. Dude, we should go to Scottsdale. And play yeah. Golf. Oh, dude. yeah. Scottsdale's Scottsdale great. Scottsdale, Eat a fucking ribeye, dude. dude and play some golf, dude. Like I, in the day. I did that with my brothers and my dad one time. We, we went to Scottsdale. We went to True North. And then we went to the steakhouse at night. Fire day. My wow, brother got the lobster great. and he got a martini. I had, you know, fucking Michelob Ultras and steak and nice. I love. And that. there's good cougars diet. there. I love cougars. Yeah, you oh, do. You might get mauled, dude. Dude, I love cougars. You do. Cougars? They love you too, though. Yeah, they, yeah. yeah. You, you got, got the fire. It's hair, a two-way street, fire baby. Bronze, uh, dude. They teach Youth. you so much. Yep. Yeah, 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 that's what it is. You're yeah. a curious person. You yeah, know I'm what like, mean? yeah. It teach me how to, you know. I mean, do you forgive me for being and then let's bone. It's true. Uh, true, dude. True. All right. Should we get into some questions, guys? Hell yeah, dude. We got a somewhat of I'm a fired up. Yeah. It. I'm, I'm feeling good. All right. This one's from Caleb. Yo, what up, council? I was hornier than a two peckered billy goat the other night, so I headed down to the local watering hole. Long story short, I was taking this fine young woman on a weenie ride, and this sex was hotter than two rats fucking in a wool sock. As I'm clapping those cheeks from behind, out of nowhere, I hear this noise that was louder than Paul Walker's 1993 Toyota Subra. She queefed right on my sausage. I didn't know how to respond. Do I laugh? Do I ignore it? And should I just count this as an L in my book or try to hit it again? The sex was great, but I don't know if it ruined it me, but I don't know if it ruined me for the future. I'm desperate for advice. Dude. Um, dude ruined it? I don't know. You, sounds like this guy's got to probably try to lose his virginity based on the way that he wrote this out. Dude, sorry to come down hard. Oh, on you, dude, dude you didn't like the dude. lingo? No, dude, I mean, yeah. I love the fire lingo, dude. I love it. But if you put that much effort as the fire lingo that you just wrote into your lovemaking, might have had a better experience, dude. That's all I'm saying, dude. Very mature. You know what I mean? It's true. With your yeah. GF, dude, you got to look, dude. There's a reason they say ladies first, dude. I mean, through the door, also, you know, in the bedroom, dude. So, you know, you got to really, like, be there to to make love, dude. Not trying to get yours, be selfish. But, dude, I do appreciate the fire lingo. I appreciate the Yeah, there's the a lot of walker. fun analogies yeah. at the beginning. But I think, I think that, but the core of what you're saying, I think it's true. Like, dude, you got to do your job. So no matter what noises come out of the person you're with you got to finish strong and you got to play as if right. you know everything's 100 percent. dude if they queef i get pumped yeah, yeah i'm dude. pumped you're creating I'm, air pockets yeah i'm like i'm yeah. like if they queef and they get embarrassed i'm like don't be embarrassed that was awesome and then be you yourself just, intimacy and you give them eye contact and you're like we got this and, and you know what that does to the other person 
gets they, them more hype. Yeah. Because they're like, this guy's cool. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. a louder queef comes out. Yeah. And then so maybe the thing is keep the lingo and just up the acceptance. Yeah. Hey, yeah. yeah, dude. Yes. Yeah. Good call. Dude, you got to accept her. All right. What up, Chad and JT? I've been loving the podcast. And you guys are giving me some serious Stockholm syndrome off your guys' positive vibes. My question is about the motive to go to the bar. I used to love hitting up the bars with my boys when they still went to college with me. But since they graduated, I've just been hitting the bars alone. It is noticeably less fun when you're going out alone. We used to fit up and go out trolling for sliz, but nowadays I just find myself trying to find anyone to talk to regardless of gender. I found that the most solid conversationalists are older dudes drinking alone, and I always ask them if they were ever in the service. It always leads to a solid convo of these retired stokers reminiscing about their days long gone. They always seemed hyped that someone has taken interest in them, and the feeling is mutual. I love hearing their tall tales, but I can't help but think that I'm actually just looking for a more serious connection that can't be fulfilled by a two-hour bar chat. Anyways, I was just wondering if I'm dodging the obligation of finding a new squad or if you guys think this is an all right practice behavior. Much love, Midwest Bob. Dude, JT, this reminded me of a combo we had recently about times in our lives when we've both been kind of isolated and how much we grew from that. Yeah. Dude, take advantage of the isolation. Yeah, d and talk to some chicks, bro. Dude, this is nice what he's doing though. Don't you don't go to the bar and start talking to guys, you know what I mean? Joe, like if, you are so full. You talk well, to more dudes at the bar than anyone. Yeah, but guys that I know, I'm not going to like meet. I'm not going to meet. But guys. that that whole Bears crew you hang out with are dudes that you've met watching games with at the bar. Yeah, but those guys that I know. No, that was that was a pre-grouped thing. Oh, okay. I mean, th those guys are all invited out. I'm not going out of my way to talk to dudes. You know what I mean? I think it's cool, man. But there are guys that do that and, like, introduce themselves. It's like, well, you're a guy, you know? It's kind of something kind of weird about it. I hear what you're saying. I don't go – I never go to bars with the intention of talking to dudes. But uh, for this guy, I think, like, if he's, like, feeling a little lonely, you know? Like, I, for me personally, take some time to dig deep inside your own dome and, like, figure out what's going on. But, yeah, I mean, on. if you're there solo, the, the, the natural inclination would be to talk to everybody. But uh, I, w I would save the effort. Well, I, I like that. I like that he's in this moment where he doesn't really have like a crew to influence what he's doing, and he's just making these decisions to go do this stuff. It's not yeah, I, I appreciate the independence. I've yeah. gone. I've gone to bars solo before years ago, but I still do. It, it is kind of weird. It's hard. It's really yeah. hard. But I think it makes you stronger. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's good. I think, you know, maybe, like, don't all, you don't want to be drinking too much, dude. You want to enjoy a nice little IPA, maybe a little bullet on the rocks, you know, who knows, dude. Yeah. You know, not too much. You got to get stuff done the next day. But, dude, uh, you know, maybe it's not always a bar where you're going out to meet new people. Maybe it's like, dude, you freaking, uh, <coughs> dude, my younger brother uh, joined, like, a kickball league, dude. And he's having fun doing that. Maybe you join, like, a team, dude, or something like that. Immediately yeah. you've been crewed up like, yeah. in that way. Uh, I don't know. Go, join, like, one of those rock climbing gyms, dude. Dude, great place. Although, yeah, uh, yeah I'm not gonna say. <laughs> what were you gonna say? Oh, dude, I just I was at rock climbing gym one time, and I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to be negative about rock climbing dudes, but yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. Sometimes, dude. Wow. <laughs> sometimes when it comes to the subculture, if you try, if you're like new to that subculture <clears throat> or whatever, dudes are very possessive of it. You know what I mean? They're like, no, yeah. this is my thing. We've talked yeah. about that with paintballing. Like, put your barrel plug in, noob. Dude, yeah, yeah. Where's your FPS? Face mask down. Dude, exactly. All right, or you get off yeah. my course. You're exactly. Like, All right, like, dude. <laughs> yeah, we got it. It's dude. my friend's birthday. We're trying to have a nice time, dude. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. We got it. You play a sport that no one else is competitive about, so by default, you've become the best player. <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. dude. Exactly. Well, it's just like you go to the rock climbing gym and you go to have like a Tom Cruise Mission Impossible two kind of experience, yes. and then you hear, then you're like trying to, you know, feel that vibe. Then you hear, ring the bell, Dylan. Ring it. Ring it, <laughs> Dylan. And you're like, who's that? Damn, dude. You don't even ring the bell. You just walk away. Yeah. And retire. Yeah. Then you, then you like, unbelay whoever's rock climbing. You're like, sorry, dude. You're on your own. Dude, I was going to – I think for this guy, like, if you want to meet some gals, yeah, there's some other work that's got to be done. Maybe get on some dating apps. But I don't see anything wrong with you going to the bar and talking to servicemen. Yeah. I think that sounds like true. a nice experience. Yeah. And, yeah. Hey, dude, who knows? Maybe All you right. meet a dank dude, and then you guys go sergeant together, dude. Yeah. He could introduce you to cougars. Amen. Hey. Good so you, point. You That's like cougs? Best point. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. You could be like, my wife has lots of friends, and you're like, perfect. 
Yeah, dude. And then you guys like go out together. It's like when Forrest Gump and Gary Sinise and Forrest Gump pick up oh, those yeah. gals, you know? And Forrest is like, I didn't lock her. She tasted locked cigarettes. <laughs> and Sinise has to be like, dude, you're the worst wingman in the world, Forrest. <laughs> he can't even say it to me. He doesn't yeah. even get it. All right, guys, next up. <laughs> Please keep your boy anonymous. <laughs> right. Nice. Well, it's just his first name. Yeah, 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 yeah. Social security numbers. <laughs> <laughs> what up, bros? I have a major problem, but first I have to provide some backstory. In high school, I was player of the year for football in the state and a three time All State nice. baseball player. Yes. All right, dude, you're becoming less anonymous, dude. I chose baseball and I'm currently playing college baseball. Baseball, not for UCI, sorry bros. And had some pretty solid accolades while here. <coughs> My problem begins now. I have dated plenty of fire babes and never got attached to any, except for one. She knows from she knows me from high school and we still talk quite a bit, but after this year we will once again be in the same town. I've tried to date since, but none give me the stoke that this babe radiates. This babe makes me feel every way Strider feels about his GF. But I don't know how she feels about me anymore. I decided to try and become the best me I can be for when we are back in town. What do you bros think I should do to prepare for this future endeavor? I guess I just want to be better than I was last time we were together instead of be on the downhill. Thanks, my dogs. Much love, bro. Stay stoked. Just do what you didn't do before, I guess. No. Like, uh, <laughs> like make the move, you mean? Well, he's like, how do I do it better? Just If you did it wrong, just... You know, it's like in uh, stand up. You know, like if you bomb, do do it different the next time. Right. So and, but I guess without so a, yeah, it sounds without like he, a, he bombed the first time around. So learn from that. Did do, he bomb? Things different. I sounds like, like he bombed. Yeah. I feel like maybe the first time around, he, he said he dated some fire babes, dude. So maybe now. No, but the, with that one chick, he wants to rekindle it. He said it. Yeah. Like he messed it up the first time, so. Don't, we, he, he's been a little uh, he, maybe I don't know exactly the details of what there was he did a lot that, going so. on in that email. Yeah, <laughs> Joe, you're Joe you're really hates this email. Go ahead. Dude. Well, I mean, <laughs> these people with these long emails. <laughs> dude, what's the most? What's the best way to email, Joe? Like, uh, I would love to hear Joe's ideal. Email. Joe doesn't well, send I, I emails. Would, I would stick. To, I would stick to one topic. Don't be like. So I was dating these girls, and then, uh, well, there was this one, and then uh, I, I was a three. Why does he have to brag about being his athletic? athletic well, I think it's good context because it makes me wonder why he's so in his dome when he's such a prodigious young man. It sounded like you know bragging. I mean? He's like, hey, you guys, I'm cool. And then he's just talking about how he sucks with the chicks. It is cool, though. That is chill. Well, yeah, I thought it was going to be in a sport related email. And then maybe his subject line should be like, Chill, bro. Good at baseball. Likes boning. Thinking about well, getting I, lit. Yeah, I mean, we didn't know that he term. was. Th what did he say? Three time All Three State time. baseball player. But, but I like what I like about that though is that like people listening and for me too, it's like, wait, so a guy who can be a three time All State baseball player still gets nervous around a gal? That means right, it's universal. Yeah. It doesn't just happen to like dudes from this crew or people from this crowd. It's like it can be anybody. For well, we, sure. I mean, we know getting chicks can be tough. I, I mean, yeah. yeah. Dude, I have some advice for this dude. I'd say stay on the path you're on of self-improvement, and then when you present yourself to her, don't try to pull any tricks. Don't try to like do any like, you know, methods Spengali, or whatever. Yeah. Just present yourself in the most positive way and be like, yeah, everything's going great. You know, I friggin' put up two sixty-five, and not, you don't have to say that off the bat, but just like present yourself in the most positive way possible, and then. She should respond to it, I think. I think it's going to go better than he thinks. I think yeah. that's great advice, dude. And then maybe if that backfires on you, which it won't because it's fire, but if it does, just get yourself a nice all-leather outfit, dude. You oh, know what dude. I mean? A all right. fire all-leather outfit, collarless leather jacket, and just show up. That it was like a muscle car, dude. That should be plan B every time. Yep, that's plan B, dude. Plan B, if, it, if your plan A backfires, plan B, a leather jacket, dude, and a vape, dude, and just... All you gotta do, here's the three words you say, for sure, and whatever. <laughs> nice. Dude, he should, if if it if it doesn't go well with her, mm -hmm. he should be like, give me five, and then roll yes. up in a Corvette yes. with leather. Great, or dude, what if you were birding in all leather? You ever seen anything oh. like that? Oh, oh wow. That's fire, yeah, dude. I would, oh, dude. I guess that would be cool. All oh. right, we got Luke. <laughs> oh, dude. What up, Stoke Nation? Wilson and Luke here, we're big fans of the pod. Such a positive influence on our stoke ratio. Need your input on our problem here. We live at a frat house, and all day we've been pretty bummed. We both had some dime pieces that were DTF, and we were skiing with them all night. 
Turns out both of us got coke dick and didn't really get to bone them. <laughs> Woke up pretty bummed and honestly contemplated putting the blow to rest. Any ideas with how to deal with this situation next time? I don't know. I've never done coke, so. Um. Damn, dude. Well, if you're going to do blow, you're kind of, you know, dealing with that. I didn't know coke dick was a thing. Yeah. It, it makes it hard to get an erection, but it makes you super horny. Oh, sounds like a Which good is kind of the do. weird uh, <laughs> dual push that it gives you. But coke also makes you want to talk. So if your dong's not working, just chat it up with her all night. You guys will mow through like 6,000 topics before sunrise. Yeah. True. Dude, I, I place the blame on Hollywood on this one because they always – like I was watching Nip Tuck. And he was boning and doing blow off her ass. That was a great show. And I'm like, and I'm like, that's not how it goes. That's how you want to stop the sesh, in my opinion. It's true. But I think if you're on the blow and you know it's not going to work, just keep talking and lay the foundation for next time when you're not on the coke. Yeah. Dude. yeah. And forgive me for being a little blue, but... Look, dude, just because you're on the blow and you can't get yours, maybe do a little bit of this. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. going to oh, say. Dude, why not do a little idea. bit of that? Blah, blah, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. yeah, you have because other moves. Exactly, yeah. dude. You're just you're kind of thinking about number one there, dude. You got to think about the lady, too. And you know what, dude? She doesn't got blow dick. You know what I mean, yeah, dude? You got, got, yeah, you got, you got your fingers. You got your yeah. mouth. You can exactly. you yeah. use your toes. Yeah. Maybe down like a liter. Just toe her. Because you, yeah. co- you can get cotton mouth. Oh, toe her. Nice. Yeah. yeah, if she's into that, then yeah, that's chill. You know, run it by her. Yeah, let's yeah. not just yeah. jump to the toe move. But you could get creative. Be like, look, I'm not like every other guy. Like, look out for my foot. For sure. And yeah, also, that'd be a coke. Sounds like it'd be a coked up move. At the but, beginning of that email, I was fired up. I thought they were actually skiing, night skiing, which is yeah. a very dangerous. That's right. Yeah, that's which, what I thought too. Yeah, it sounds fun. You're with your GF. And then you're he's got to go to drugs. Like which, a, yeah, which yeah. stokers would be way cooler. Typical if, frag if you're actually guy. night skiing, than doing blow. Yeah. So. And dude, barring any accident with a tree, your dong's gonna function properly after night skiing. Yeah. Oh, you dude, know? you're gonna be flowing. Yeah, you're gonna be feeling good. So I, I'd say, I'd say. Put the blow to the curb and hit the slopes. Yeah. Good call. For real. The real slopes, yeah. Also, you could probably get cotton mouth, too. So maybe before you go down, you know, down like a liter of Fiji water. Good call. Yeah. For some reason, Fiji water. water feels extra wet for water. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I think because in Fiji, it's like, it's wetter. It's dank there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like island. A higher liquidity. Mm. What up, Stoke Nation? I currently reside in the burbs of ATL, and me and my squad had quite the altercation on New Year's. We went to rage at a girl's house on the other side of town, and it was dope for the first few hours. But then these schmoles walked in at like 11.55. Vibe switched real quick. We were vibing with them for 30 minutes, and we were chilling. Out of nowhere, one of my boys said something to one of them, and he wasn't feeling it. Both squads argued for a good 30 minutes. We didn't want to fight because we were being hosted by the girl we didn't know that well. Things broke out. My dog got hit in the face, but one of my other boys broke a kid's sunglasses. He was heated. The girl boked us out of the house, and they were waiting for us outside. We hopped in the car quick, and we evaded. We live in a small town, so we will see these, we will see these fools again. If you see them in public, if we see them in public, do we let it fly or avoid a fight? We're in high school, by the way. Love the pods. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, I don't, I think I could speak for the podcast. We don't uh, condone violence here. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, appreciate that, Joe. Thank you. Is, my, that, is that a right to say? Absolutely. Do my move is squash the beef. And I think if you need instructional materials on how to do that, watch Trent in the movie Swingers. Ooh, There's an yeah. altercation towards the back end of the film. A gun gets pulled, and they're dealing with definite schmoles. I mean, the guys they're fighting with are not cool, but Trent is cool enough to find a way to bridge a gap with the schmoles, and I think that's part of the reason that movie's so dynamite. Fire, fire response. Yeah. Be the be- better man. Maybe send them, like, a steak or something. Some cinnamon rolls. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you want them – maybe it's kind of tricky because you're being yeah. nice, but you're sending them carbs. Like, here's True. some treats. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a Giordano's deep dish stuffed spinach. Oh and then next time yeah. you see them, they all look oh, yeah. fat. You're like – they don't even want to fight anymore because like they're that. so, like, tired from yeah. all the – Carb lethargy, and if you're yeah. nefarious, it's gonna slow them down. If it does come to Dukes, you'd probably win. They're all lethargic. Adonis, hey bros, my name is Donnie, and I have a question. I got a Tinder date, and I'm pretty sure I'm being catfished by a larger woman. I mean, nothing wrong with being thick, but I'm way more into thick ladies. Now I'm saying. Anyway, should I call her out on her duplicitous ways? Nah. See, that's one where you need more. Like, how does he know that she's thick? Um, maybe he's looked at different accounts there. or something. It could something, be, just be angles, like some people. Well, yeah, if you're if you're getting a lot of photos where where she's like, it looks like she's it, uh, it, uh, she's Mission getting someone's doing it. Someone from a hot air balloon is yeah. taking her picture. 
then it's like uh, she's probably fat. Dude, speaking but, of, Joe, you have the best dating app photos, I think, of all of us. Oh, thanks. Yeah. There's one of him. Tell that to the broads. There's one of him taking out the laundry. Fire. Yeah. I love that, dude. I mean, that's like that's well, going to get you life, a GF, too, dude. Well, that one I got laundry than any human that's ever <laughs> lived. So, well, I got rid of that one because my arms looked small. Oh, dude, you got to throw that back up there, dude. I don't no know. No other dude has a laundry photo. All right. I don't know True. if women care about arms as much as men care about arms. I remember I was talking to some gals in high school, and they were like, "Man, the guy Dermot Mulroney from My Best Friend's Wedding, he's so good looking." And I was like. <laughs> His arms are puny, and they're like, we don't care about arms. And same with same thing with David Beckham. Like, mm-hmm. I remember I saw him shirtless on the cover of a magazine. I was like, he's not even jacked. Yeah. They're like, no, he has a nice body. I'm like, dude, beauty. I need in the some eye more of the musculature. Beholder. Yeah, I mean, some core chicks dig arms, important. dude. Some don't. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I respect core, and I respect Rick Wilson's, and I respect good glutes. I respect functional strength. Nice. And I think that honestly, it's gonna make you bone better. You know, if you're athletic, fluid motion. Yeah. Good call. It's gonna be. Yeah, we when we were with the strongmen at the competition, like they looked huge and jacked, but I was like, you know, looks like you have a tough time boning. Yeah. But I mean, you, you gotta have a Joe size hog to like get past all that muscle. True. True. Yeah, you have to really bury it in there. True. That's well. why. I, that's why I keep it lean, dude. You know, my hog, not not large, dude. Just kind of, you know, just very. Uh, I would say, uh, medium, like on the lesser side of medium. Oh, small and uh, dude, I think that that's why I keep it lean, dude. You know what I mean? Like I don't yeah. want to get too jacked because that's I already have a large like frame, like you know six three, dude. So I don't want to you know put on too many LBs because yeah. I wouldn't be doing myself favors. Y- yeah, dude. you don't. Want you don't want to have to add your quads to the mix. So it's like correct, but yet I need strength. I want to be functional. I want to be able to you know yeah move. It's tough um, to to buckle. Yeah, definitely, definitely, dude. All right, last question. This is from Max. I'm a senior at college this year. My residential college is in a little bit of a bind. We have these fun traditions where we initiate freshmen through strange and elaborate drinking games, e.g. making them learn a poem in a dark room with strobe lights, and then they recite it to us, and for every mistake they make, they have to hit the beer bong. Short digression, my compadre bought a Helix beer bong, and they're unreal. Unfortunately, college admissions has cracked down on these types of games under a new strict policy against hazing. I just want to know if you guys have had any experience with initiation type rituals and what some potential new rituals could be that we introduce, which are a far cry from hazing. Thanks so much, fellas. So much love, Max. Dude, yeah, I, I was in a fraternity and uh, with my interviews and stuff, you do like interviews. I just got weird with it. I didn't like, you know, I'd be like, hey, let's drink together. But, you know, I did one where like, one guy was like my Lloyd he was like my assistant and uh he would just like sort of like i don't think it was hazing he would just fan me with a palm frond and bring me margaritas is that hazing no i think a lot of people no. would volunteer for that job yeah absent of even being able to get into the frat yeah, yeah. and then his his name was aaron but now everyone knows him as lloyd it's a tremendous amount of authorship to have in someone's life yeah so um maybe change their name yeah i, uh, I was in a yeah, I, I didn't do the frat thing either. I think a fun thing that we were talking about prior to getting on the pod is that, like, dude, what if you hazed people with positive things? Like, you were like, so for your hazing, you have to drink three green smoothies today. Yeah. <laughs> Great call. And then you're like, and if you don't, dude, we're going to pin you down and hit you with a shot of vitamin B12 in your butt. Yeah. yeah. So you have, like, a lot of energy tonight when we go out. Dude, for your nice. hazing, you need to play backgammon with a WW2 veteran. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. go, go to go visit some uh, elderly people, dude. They like youth. <laughs> they like good energy. Yeah, you have to get a horny elderly guy. Yeah. Um, laid. Laid. Yeah, be a wingman. That's actually yeah. a functional. Or you test, don't even have to yeah. get them laid, but you got to go because, like, yeah. I don't want to be too results oriented. True. But you got to try. Make them have yeah. a nice time. You yeah. Know what I mean? Exactly. Dude, uh, pretty much a uh, scent of a woman style. Make this guy have a nice time. You right. know. You'd be like, uh, they'd be like, hey, um, so what are we gonna do for my interview? You'd be like. We're going to hit the cryotherapy chamber. I'm going to boost your endorphins. Love yeah, that, dude. dude, for your hazing, that girl you've been in love with for three years, you have to publicly declare your love for her. Oh, good. Yeah. Love yes. it, dude. Love it. I do kind of And still if you don't, dude, we're all going to chant things at you. <laughs> like, you <laughs> you have love in your heart. You won't let out. You have love in your heart. You won't let everyone. He's like, shut up. Yes, I will let it out. Jenny, I love you. And then, and then the whole frat goes nuts. I love her. <laughs> He loves her, dude. That's yeah. You're 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 stoked, dude. Your bro, your bro just found a GF, dude, and that's freaking dank, dude. Like, I freaking get jacked on love. I love love, dude. You love it. I love it, dude. Joe. If we had, if you were giving me an interview, what would you make me do? 
uh, push-ups. <laughs> Good call. Yeah. Till failure. All right, guys. Do we have a mission statement of the week? Oh, fine. Let me look at that. All right. Well, while while Chad finds our mission statement of the week, maybe we can get into our. Uh, we'll do that after this next part, then. Yeah. Okay. Cool. We'll start with you then, Strides. What up, my dog? Legends, Who is dude. your babe of the week? Dude, my babe of the week's freaking got to be my GF, dude. Because, dude, we just got we logged onto this website. I forget the name of it, dude, but we're gonna get these dank renderings for our apartment, dude. Where uh, it's gonna give us some great ideas for interior decor, and I'm fired up on that, dude. My GF, she did the legwork, she found it, dude. I Venmo her, so we split the costs, dude. It was pretty cost effective, and we're gonna get some good ideas, dude, for you know what to do with our curtains, dude. What to do with like you know some wall art, dude. Maybe even I don't know, switch up the TV couch sitch. I don't know, dude. So, just freaking, freaking, just total, yeah, dude. My GF just killing it right now, dude. Love just that. Fired up. Nice. Joe, who is your babe of the week? Uh, my babe of the week is uh, Weep. Uh, week is uh, Mrs. Myers. Um, she makes a uh, hand soap. Oh, yeah. That I've recently discovered that I love. Um, there's a scent called Geranium that's really kind of uh, giving me a good boost. I, I've gotten off the dial and the other stuff, and, you know, I used to be a big spring water soap guy but now i like uh, geranium and basil i'm really getting into the uh clean body stuff nice uh i get fired up on that and you know what dude that right there is what i like to call gf bait dude gfs love nice quality soaps dude yeah Something that's great soft soap. on the skin yeah dude. You, you really, dude, you really sparks joy when you're rushing your head. You feel something nice, dude. You know I what know, I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fired up on hearing that right now. Is that sparks joy thing coming from Marie Kondo? Absolutely, dude. We're reviewing that in a couple of weeks on the oh, pod. Are dude. you watching it? Oh, bro. Uh, dude, my GF and I read it, dude. Yeah. Oh, you read it too? Oh, yeah, dude. Beast mode. Fired up, dude. Fired up on that. And yeah, dude, I think there's a new uh, Netflix movie with that, right? Uh, TV show, yeah. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, magic. Marie Kondo is a, uh, like, home cleaning expert i guess would be the way oh. to describe it and now she's got a show on netflix dude, i'm stoked on this newfound knowledge i didn't know soap had so much power yeah dude anything can beyond dude. just like cleaning properties yeah, yeah. wow anything that you for dude i don't wash my hands after i stuff. piss oh dude you got to, it dude it's point. gonna it's flu season dude. i fake it dude i i i'm, I'm awful but i waste a little water i just put the thing up to like fake people out and then i just oh it's a great move yeah. when they're hanging yeah. out in the but, other room great yeah but <laughs> flu season but is the flu on your dong yeah Oh, it's everywhere, dude. Your hands, the number one thing I don't think the flu gets is washing your, your hands. Dude, my mom called me yesterday and goes, Strider, dude. Uh, she didn't say that, dude, but she was like, <laughs> okay, the flu's killing people. Get your shot. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you later. Yeah, dude. Yeah, you moms hilarious. are hardcore, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah. People are always like, dude, you, you get your flu shot? I'm like, I take cold showers. That's there true. Your immune systems. It. And, yeah. dude, we're drinking green drink. We're fired up, dude. Hey, you're healthy as a horse. Who's your babe of the week? Chad. Strider, dude. No. <laughs> My mom, what up, dude? What up, dude? Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, that's freaking dank. Yeah. <laughs> when she gave birth to Strider, she's like, oh, that's a dank baby. <laughs> uh, okay. My babe of the week is high energy 80s music. Nice. People ask me all the time, Chad, what's your inner monologue like? And I'm like, well, why don't you throw on the 80s playlist on Spotify? Because that's my inner monologue, you know? Constantly in my dome, living on a prayer, walking on sunshine, no stranger to love, maniac, mm. freaking Huey Lewis, mm. freaking too hip to be square. No, hip to be square, sorry. Um, oh, what about Steve? Kenny Loggins? Kenny, Steve oh, Kenny Winwood, Loggins. dude. Bring me a higher love. Oh, yeah, dude. So... Um, yeah. 80s music. What? There's. Oh, never gonna give you up, Rick Astley. That's probably the number one. Never gonna give you. Yeah, yeah, for the Stokers. Also. Yeah. This is constantly in my dome. This is my inner monologue. <laughs> yeah. Did you have a job interview yeah, or something, dude? You need to go to apply for a loan or something, dude. You just freaking. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it's good Fire. stuff. Uh, so, yeah, 80s music. Thank you for bringing the good vibes. Thank you for bringing the positivity. And thank you for just making my day all overall just amazing. And uh, that's my babe. 
Dude, my baby is super similar. My baby of the week is um, covers, Ooh. like oh. music covers, dude. Yeah. I oh. just I get such a different like excitement when I hear a good cover of a song, and I oftentimes think the cover can exceed the original. Mm. Um, so I wrote some down. Like the BBC One Radio Lounge YouTube channel has some super solid ones. I'd recommend checking out One Direction. They do some good covers on there. The 1975 that band does a good cover of Rather Be, and also What Makes You Beautiful by One Direction. And then Donald Glover's cover of Tamia Hill, Tamia Till, Tamia Tamil, So Into You, is one of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard. Mm. And then we got Haim does That Don't Impress Me Much. Tainted Love was a cover, remember? Really? Or a remake, rather. Yeah, there was an original oh. Tainted Love that's like more of like a, uh, I don't know what era I would compare it to. It's almost like a like a doo wop version. Oh. Really? And then and then there's the English like rock version that we got, which is so like dang. the standard now. Yeah. Um, you know, all on the watchtower. Yep. It's a cover of a Dylan song. Mm -hmm. yep. Guns and Roses, Stairway <sighs> to Heaven, and then Live and Let Die by Guns and Roses. Yes. Are just I think improvements. Guns and Roses did Stairway to Heaven. Oh yeah. No, they did Knocking on Heaven's Door. Oh yeah, Knocking yeah. on Heaven's Door. That's, That's right. Yeah. Thank Good you, call, Joe. Joe. Thank you. Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Ow, 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 ow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and Fire. so I just think covers, man, it's a fun way to look at the world. It's a slight spin on stuff. And, and I think, you know, sometimes the the duplicate is better than the original. So that's my pave of the week. Mm. It's a blast. Mm. Strider, who is your legend of the week? Dude, my legend of the week is my GF, dude, because if she recently got these new shoes, they're freaking eco-friendly shoes, dude. Wow. Yeah. I don't know exactly the science behind it or what's going on, dude. Maybe it's just the way they make them. But, dude, first of all, they look chill. It's a nice pair of sneakers, dude, that she has. And, dude, it's just freaking dank. And I love knowing that my GF is cruising around with comfortable feet. And, dude, her she's literally leaving a low carbon footprint with that shoe, dude. So, very dank, dude. Very mindful of her, dude. Uh, looking out for all of us with some uh, some legit uh, footwear. So, could be my GF, dude. Nice, yeah. dude. Nice. Joe, who is your legend of the week? Uh, my legend of the week is um, Joe Marisi. That's uh, myself. Nice. Um, nice. So, dude. It, yeah, I mean, I, I got a birthday coming up this week, and, uh, you know, just happy where things are. Like you said, I, I do a lot of laundry. I just i am keeping up with things. Room's clean. I got money. Got a birthday this week and uh, just happy with where I'm at and uh, I'm I'm the man, you know. Yeah. So uh, agreed. I'm Hell tip, yeah. I'm gonna tip that. my cap to myself the week of my birthday. So love I you. love love Thanks. you, Joe. Love you, dude. And you know what, dude? Love you, Practice Joe. self love, dude. I mean, so many of us want to, you know, you know, you don't want to be boasty or braggy too much, but dude, what you just said right there is fire. Dude. Yeah, you, you gotta, gotta acknowledge. Give yourself uh, a pat on the back. Thanks. Every once in a while, yeah. Dude. Joe, if I could hug you for the rest of eternity, I would. Joe could give nice. himself a pat on the back with his dong. <laughs> Dude, you could literally do that. Yeah. Have you ever done that? Uh, yeah. There you have it. Cool. Chad, who is your legend of the week? My legend of the week is eye contact. Whoa. Oh, dude, fire. Eye contact. Dude, eye contact is powerful, dudes. Yes. You don't want to hold it for too long to come off as creepy, but you want to make sure that you lock in solid eye contact in every situation, you know, whether you're in a job interview or you're boning. Um, make sure you lock in that eye contact. You did mention to me that you were boning recently yeah. and that you increased the eye contact. Passion through the roof. Oh, yeah. Dude, Stokers, you want to increase passion in your boning, especially if it, yeah, lock in that eye contact, dude. Let them know you're there and you're present. So, um, we're all staring at each other now. Yeah, dude, yeah. I, I'm loving it, dude. Remember <laughs> yeah. when we did the podcast in shades? It was difficult, dude. Yeah, it was it harder. Hard. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I can just like this see you. Right. It was hard. I used to have sex with shades on. I was so embarrassed, dude. Yeah, really. And but then once I took them off, it changed the, the game. Was for it me. on the beach? Kind of edgy too, though. Oh yeah, yeah. was it outdoor sex? Because then it's functional. No, no, it was in the bedroom. Oh, okay. Yeah, no lights on. Nice. Just my aviators. Nice. nice. Oh, you wear aviators? I mean, that's kind of cool, though. Yeah, I did. I think I did look cool, but I think yeah. I do think it. Also, you kind of futz about, and they get mixed up on your head and yeah, stuff. True. Yeah, you switch positions. Yeah, there's yeah. nothing, nothing that, nothing that'll kill the vibe more than like glasses askew. Yeah, but has have you been throwing the eye contact outside of the? Uh, Dude, all all the time, you know, because I I I, I realized earlier in my life you know people would throw me the eye contact and i'd be like i'd look away you know 
can't be weak like that. Lock it in. Uh, that's one of the Arnold's things that he did. He locks in that eye contact. In like the Coral video we just posted, he takes like a two, two, maybe one or two second pause, and he just looks at the camera and just holds it. Do you notice that? Yeah. That's why he's the governor. He commands the moment. Yeah. Because if you don't, the moment commands you. Oh. Fire. Dude, my legend of the week is Ron Meyer, super agent. Helped start the uh, very powerful talent agency, CAA, with Michael Ovitz. And uh, Michael Ovitz is kind of like the more conventional, like Darth Vader leader or the Emperor leader, where he's like kind of like manipulative, at least in the book Powerhouse, which is where I'm getting all this. Uh, it's an oral history. It's really easy to read, a lot of fun. Um, but Ron Meyer is actually kind of like super cool, and everybody loves him. He basically got to where he is by just being like a mensch. You know, he's an ethical hedonist. He's an honest broker. He just does his job and he loves it. And that's what makes him good at it. But he's also kind of a badass. He was a Marine. Wow. And then he was gambling. Like after he was already like a powerful dude with Michael Douglas and another like rich, powerful Hollywood type. And some guys were being rude to that guy's daughter. And Ron Meyer threw down with both of them at a bar in the South Pacific. Love Weeks it. later, he's like, oh, my ribs are still sore. He gets them checked out. They're broken. He just Whoa. kept going and he didn't even know. And I mean, so this is a guy who checks a lot of boxes. He still works at Universal as a vice president. And he's just like, uh, he's just a beast. But it seems like he did it the right way. So I just wanted to highlight that. All right, dude, who is your Strider Beef of the Week? Beef of the Week, dude, has got to be, I don't know his name, dude. I don't know what he looks like, dude. But um, my girlfriend was trying to park down in Venice. And parking in Venice is hard, dude. And uh, she's pulling into a space and like has the blinker on. It's like, this is my space. We've all been in that scenario. You know what I'm saying? Freaking dude rolls up because the guy, the way that the person like backed out kind of created a little gap, you know, like how they screen you and then it kind of leaves room like, but it's too aggressive. Like you got to cut that in tight to get in. That guy does that, takes my GF's parking space, dude. Then my GF's a little fired up, dude. And she, he goes, he goes, she's like, what are you doing? Like, that's my space. Like not aggressive, but like enough to be like, and dude, respect on her for calling out. A lot of us sometimes just be like, bite that bullet and just move on. She's like, what are you doing? Like, I clearly had my single on, you know? And he's like, I'm from here. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, he dude. pulled the local goes, card? I'm from here, that's dude. That's a great line. You got to That's walk. fire. That's a walk off. That's, that's fire, Drop dude. the mic. But here's the thing, dude. I, park I, I park love the that. car, get out. He won. No, he won. Dude, I, Joe, I hear what you're saying, uh, dude. But here's the thing, dude. That's like best you gotta line ever. You got to respect form. You see that he goes, I'm from here, dude. Honestly, I want to fact check it. I bet he's not. Yeah, from I here. don't think he's from I bet here. He's just, I bet he's just a rich dude who has a house in Venice, probably a second house or whatever. Dude. This is like around Abbott Kenny, legit, dude. And uh, um, so, dude, freaking. I'm from yes, here. It's a great line, but you know, yeah. It's over. <laughs> Joe just dropped the yeah, cap from Joe, the green drink. Joe pulls that in Chicago all the time. If you're from, you, well, you can tell if someone's I from Chicago. I bet you Joe says that everywhere. <laughs> yeah, Joe's like, <laughs> Joe, Joe's in the shitter at a yeah. Burger King, and he's like, I'm from here. Yeah. <laughs> so that was gold. I mean, the gold line, dude, very frustrating from this guy, dude. I mean, I would not exact violence on him, dude, but I'd like to be like, I'd like to find out, are you in fact from here? Because I bet you he flew here. He did not. I would like to say grew, but he did not grow here, dude. So, and even if you did, that doesn't give you the right to jack someone's parking space when they clearly had it, dude. Absolutely. So, that was my beef of the week, dude. Treat my GF without beef. respect, dude. Did she get the spot? No, dude. The guy left and bailed. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, I thought about getting bird seed. I'm like, dude, that would have been pretty fire. What do you do with the bird seed? Put it on there and then pigeons crap like seagulls because you're by the beach. Oh, smart. You yeah. should have egged this. Dude, Still I like, gets them, but I, I like that your, permanent I like damage. that your GF even knows Next that. Time my GF's fired up. She's got great ideas, dude. Next time, egg them. Egg is great. I held that for like dude, that's it. We got it. We got, got it on it. camera. It. Oh, yeah. fire, dude. dude Chad and Strider had a high five and almost didn't forth. happen. I was like, I was like this. All right, Joe, who is your <laughs> beef of the week? Uh, I got a beef of the week with um, uh, with rice cakes. Whoa. I've been buying. Uh, I've been seeing you eating them, yeah. Yeah, trying out different snacks. Now, the rice cake, okay, so I take a big bite into it, and it just all it crumbles in a million pieces. So now it's rice. Ugh. So I'm just going to make rice and not bother with the cake. So I'm not I'm not going to just buy something with rice crumbled together if it's just going to break apart all anyways. Yeah. I'm just going to make rice then. Yeah. What am I doing with this cake? It yeah. it, it does look hard to eat in like a frustrating That's thing. drier than rice. I need water immediately too. True. I and mean, I guess to swallow it. Yeah, dude. <laughs> 
It's like the only way you should eat that is on if you're on the move, I guess. Yeah, I get it. No, because you're going to get crumbs all over you. True. And in your car. If you're in your car, if that's what you're thinking. Yeah, that's I'm going to eat this in my car. No, you're not. It's going to get all over. All right, Chad, who is your beef of the week? Uh, my beef of the week, sorry, dudes, is uh, with news apps. Mm. Stokers, I deleted all my news apps, and let me tell you, I'm not missing anything. Life is good. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I'm not. I have no idea what's going on in the world, and I feel better than ever. Nice. I'd rather watch, you know, Vin Diesel, um, do a wheelie in his charger. You know, like why not start sure. the morning like that? Um, all right, dudes. My beef of the week is with Tom Brady. Yes. Dude, yes. Yes. dude good. Whoa. Whoa. Enough is enough. As far as I'm concerned. And yes, I'm a hater. This is pure hate. I just think the guy has too he's too successful. Him and Bill Belichick both. Mm. The way I see it, they should have won that first Super Bowl against St. Louis as the plucky underdogs and we always would have celebrated them as these like can-do, underestimated, you know, gritty player and coach. But now it's just been a dynasty for my entire life, and I'm just tired of them winning every year. Yep. It's just over and over again. They win, and they win, and they win. And the worst part is they always somehow manage to make me think they're going to lose. Yes. Because the whole game, I'm like, the fucking Patriots are going to win. The fucking Patriots are going to win. But then there's always this moment in the game where I'm like, wait, no, the Patriots are going to lose. Yeah. Like yesterday, for yeah. instance, yeah. on like third and six or something like that, clock coming down in the fourth quarter, they're down. Brady throws the pass, goes off the top of Gronk's hands, picked. Yes. I'm like, yes. there's no way they can win now. That's yes. the game. That's All the of game. a sudden, flag. Oh, dude. Of course. Yeah. Late flag. Offsides. He was offsides. Yeah, I think he was, it was like a, lined up in the back. It was a fair, it first. Yeah. but it was a fair call. And then, yeah. And I'm just way like, off, way they off fucking side. got me again. And after that, I knew the Patriots were going to win. Yep. I knew they'd win the toss in overtime. I knew they'd fucking score. The fucking Chiefs defense sucks. Oh, and Swiss I mean, cheese. look. I'm just sick of it. Can you guys just stop fucking winning? And yes. can you just go away? Thank you. Dude. And dude, and then last year at the Super Bowl, I was saying fuck Tom Brady, and there was a girl from Boston oh. there, and she's like, "Do you know how much more successful Tom Brady is than you?" I was like, "Yeah, I fucking yeah, know, we dude. Know. I know. Yeah, I'm under no illusions." And then after the game, I watched a clip of him and Gronk being like, "We ain't going nowhere." That yeah, that, was, that yeah. was horrible. Yeah, I kind of like. I thought it was badass. I was like, I had a begrudging respect. Yeah, but, but yeah. it's. No, yeah, it's no. pretty you hated legendary. It? No, I. But the look he was giving no, they, was so lame. They deserve to do that because but people the, have been hating on him but this year. He could have given a way better smirk. Dude, I, 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 I'm just like. I want the Rams. To congrats I want to them. And Dominic can sue to freaking sack Tom Brady. That defense so is gonna. I want, have, dude. That I literally have to want be Tom Brady. Lights out. I was saying this yesterday during the game. I'm not proud of this, Stokers. This is hatred. This is not Stoke. But when I was watching the game yesterday, I was like, I hope Tom Brady and Bill Belichick die. <laughs> I wanted them to fucking die, dude. I'm so sick and tired of watching these motherfuckers win. And, dude, they're the best. But on my all-time list, I have Brady as my fourth best quarterback of all time. I got Belichick as my ninth best coach of all time. Love That's it. my list. Dude. No Aaron Rodgers. Well, I don't care if Aaron Rodgers never wins another Super Bowl. Tom Brady wins 10 more by the time he's 50. I'm going Aaron Rodgers over Tom Brady. Love that. I love Rodgers. <laughs> Joe doesn't like Rodgers because he's a Bears guy, but you know what, dude? I love Rodgers. No, I respect him, but he's not Brady. He'd probably write the fuck dude, him, dude. The guys. God damn it, dude. Makes they just me win so everything. mad, dude. All right, Strider, do you have a quote of the week? Yeah, dude. My quote of the week is, really, dude, I was like, you know, going through, I was watching, chilling. Uh, my GF went to bed a little early, dude. She's been working hard lately, dude, and I freaking was flipping through the channels, dude, and this dank movie comes on, dude. Dank movie. Now, it's not from this week, but I watched it this week. And let me just hit you with a quote because you're going to know exactly what it's from, dude. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius, command of the armies of the North, general to the Felix Legions, father to a murdered son, husband to a murdered wife, and I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. Fire, dude. Yeah. Dude, fire. fire. You are fire, man. Yeah, that dude. Is, yeah. Smart, Mike man. drop, bro. You should have yeah. said that back dude, to the guy yeah, who took dude. Jill's yeah. parking spot, yeah. dude. Don't, yeah, do, oh, <laughs> dude. Dude, GF's <laughs> parking spot. Yeah. yeah. Dude. <laughs> My name is Strider Wilson, <laughs> boyfriend to a dank legend. Yeah. Whose parking space was transgressed upon, and I will have my vengeance in this parking lot or the next. Dude, well <laughs> done. But I'm man. from here. Yeah. yeah. I'm from here. No. No. This is Rome. Dude, this great Rome line. Is a vision. So, dude, just fire, dude. The way he just like delivers that line, dude, gets you so fired up. 
he just embraces the moment, dude. He knows that he's caught, but he's like, I'm a freaking just straight up come at you right now, dog. And he does. And dude, it's just pure fire. And I love that movie, dude. So excellent. Fire it up. Joe, who's your legend of the week? Or quote of the oh, week? Oh, sorry. Who's your quote of the week? I love this quote. Uh, this is a quote that I've, it's uh, from Johnny Cash. Oh, yeah. All Speaking right. of uh, remakes, Hurt. Is this from the coffee shop? Yeah, this is from uh, the coffee shop that I've been to a few times. Um, they, they have it posted up there. It's Johnny Cash when he was asked on what his description of what paradise would be. And he says, this morning with her having coffee. Ooh. Yeah, it's it's just That's beautiful. Awesome. I mean, everything about that. It just It's so it, tight. It's simple. It's, um, you know, it's... It just it, that's all you need. That's that, that's what I need. That's it. That's there's nothing there. extra, and there's so much implied. Yeah, that's Absolutely. awesome. With her, you know, he's talking about June, man. It's of beautiful. Course. That's awesome. Legend. I love that. Chad, what is your quote of the week? Dudes, I gotta go with Arnold. Mm. I gotta quote Arnold. Mm. The best acti- The best. Oh, I'm not even gonna try the accent. The best activities for your health are pumping and humping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna throw in eye contact too. Yep. Pumping and humping with eye contact. The eye okay. contact adds a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big time. Personalize it. Yeah. Dude, simplify it. You know, all these nutrition people, they make like, they make it seem so confusing. They're like, you need to do all this, you need to do that, you need to do that. And Arnold's like, you need to pump and hump. And you're like, thank you. Now nah, I can do that. It takes the pressure off, too. You're like, all right, yeah. as long as I'm doing that stuff, I'm doing well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, my quote of the week is from a, a short <clears throat> in the uh, – and in the – movie Parish Atem. Parish Atem is like a bunch of vignettes where different directors made little shorts about uh, Paris and they combined them all together. It's from the one called Bastille. It's all voiceover narration and this guy's about to break up with his wife. She like annoys the hell out of him and he's going to leave her for a mistress. But when he sits down with her, he actually finds out from his wife who starts crying first that she's sick. She has cancer. So he instead he breaks up with the mistress and all the stuff he hated about his wife he ends up starting to like as he supports his wife through what she's going through. And then at the end it says his wife like got sick and passed away and the man never recovered. And it says by pretending to be a man in love, he became a man in love. And I really love that idea. It's the same idea in like the movie The Postman where it's like Kevin Costner's just like this actor dude, but by pretending to be a postman and pretending to stand for like something bigger than himself, he actually becomes that thing. Mm. And I think that's like a good message. Mm-hmm. I yeah, love that. Man. Love that, dude. All right, guys. Uh, the mission statement. Um, mission statement comes from our dogs at Hurley. Through creative outlet and provision, Hurley upholds the standards for freedom of expression and the importance of an individual's voice. Strong. Nice. But Strong. not, I think it's too short. I need more from Hurley. Yeah. Yeah. Strong, concise. Can I read it real quick? I think we still got to yeah. go with uh, Ruka as the number one so yeah, far. Yeah, Ruka so far. What does provision mean? Through creative outlet and provision. Uh, I get the feeling that all these surf companies, they just like look at a dictionary. They're like, all right, what are some big words? Yeah, yeah. provision's a big word. Of, so uh, congrats on that, Hurley, but unfortunately you're not taking the top spot from Ruka. Respect. Uh, guys, that'll be it for episode 54 of Going Deep with Chad and JT. Joe and Strider, thank you guys so much for coming in. Yeah, great Never being better here. than when we have our dogs. Dude, love, love hanging here. with our dogs. Yep. Just thank you. Treat. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Stokers. Boom, clap, Stokers. Let me. Do you have time to throw a review in there? Oh. Boom, clap, Stokers. Um, 